Today I want to give you an example of applying a radio button attribute to a product. I'm going to go into my products area and click on add and I'm going to create a new shirt. Give it a code, give it a name, I'm going to give it a price of 20 and I'll also give it a weight value of a pound. I'm going to use some Latin for the description here and I'm going to have it repeat so that it represents two paragraphs for this product's description. I'm going to click add and let's have a look at the product. And here are two paragraphs for the product's description. And notice there's a space in between them because I encapsulated my paragraphs in paragraph tags. Here in the edit product screen for this new product we added, we want to click into attributes. I'm going to create a new attribute and it's going to be called size. I'm going to give it a code give it a prompt. A few people have asked me about code versus prompt and you could kind of think of it as the code value being handled and used by the computer and the prompt value being used for humans. In fact, this prompt here is exactly what the customer will see on the store portion of your website. The type I want here is radio button. I'm going to click update. So recap here, we just created an attribute and the attribute is called size. And now we're being prompted to add options for this attribute. I'm going to start with the size small. Hit update. Medium. Update large update. As you can see, there are now options available for the customer to select a size. They are able to select small, medium, or large. Alternatively, if we had selected, say, a drop down, instead of radio button, it would look something like this. Now, for a lot of people, this might be as far as they would have to go, but there are some people who need to keep track of numbers. They track inventory for their products. And if you think about it, this isn't really the best solution for someone like that because the way this product is set up, there's still only one product. Even though we're offering small, medium, and large, on the back end, this is all being treated as if it were one product. In the real world, a small shirt versus a medium shirt versus a large shirt would all be different products. They'd all be sorted on different shelves in your inventory. And they would also have different inventory numbers. You might have five smalls, you might have six mediums left and you might have 10 larges left. Well, with the way this is set up currently, there's no way to really represent that. Because of this, we introduced something new in 5.5 called Attribute Machine. Let me show you a little bit about Attribute Machine and some of the cool new things that Attribute Machine brings to the table. To use Attribute Machine, when you're setting up an attribute, you want to click on this I column. I, by the way, stands for inventory. Click on the I and hit update. To showcase one of the new features powered by Attribute Machine, I'm going to create a new type of attribute we never really offered before. And it's called Swatch. So click on Add Attribute, and in the drop down for Type, let's select Swatch drop down list. I'm going to have this swatch attribute represent different color options for this product. I'm 
I'm going to give it the code of color, and I'm going to say select color. Here I'm going to check I and hit update. Let's give it a white option. A red option. And a black option. When I refresh the screen here, you see here that there's the size dropdown and also the select color dropdown. But notice they are not selectable. They're not selectable because they're not fully configured yet. We set them up with the I checkbox, which means they're being powered by the attribute machine, but we're not done configuring the attribute machine. To do that, let's go back into the admin and we want to click on the tab called Inventory Variants. All we have to really do here is click on Auto Generate. A prompt box will come up and you actually have two options here. One is called Variant Price is set by the master product and its attributes or Variant Price is set by the inventory product. I'm going to click on the second one that allows you to be able to load information pertinent to each variant in real time when you select that variant. For instance, if the black t-shirt was a few dollars more, if I selected the black t-shirt in the swatch attribute, it will automatically update the price on my screen. It will also update other things like the product's image and the product's weight if they're different. So. I like that extra functionality. I'm going to select the second option here and I'm going to click on generate and look what happens. The system takes every combination and automatically creates new products for every combination of size and color. In fact, if I go up here and do a search for shirt, I used to only have one product, but if I wanted to see what the store just did, you can see it automatically created new products based on the different sizes and the different colors. The swatch attribute has a few more tricks up its sleeve and I wanna walk you through that. So let's go back into the primary shirt product and back into attributes. Firstly, when we go back into the swatch attribute and click edit for the different options, you'll notice that there's actually a column for image. I can click upload and browse to a specific image of my choosing and click the upload button and then click update and I'm gonna do the same thing for the red option Click update and I'm going to do it again for the black option. And then click update. If I refresh the screen, I not only have a drop down for white, red, and black, but I also have squares that I can click on for white, red, and black. Notice when I click on red, the dropdown updates to red. And when I click on black, the dropdown also updates to black. That's because the dropdown for select color and these squares are linked. One last thing I wanna show you. I'm gonna pull up the black shirt products. And let's drag them in. I'm going to put up all the white shirts. And I'm 
going to do the red shirts too. And let's see what happens here. When I hit refresh, here's my shirt. If I hit red, it shows the red shirt. And if I hit black, it shows the black shirt. Same thing if I select in the drop down white or red or black. And that's how you use the attribute machine.